while there is more than enough to enjoy for casual viewers, longtime Stephen King fans get to experience that extra layer of storytelling. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best Stephen King Easter eggs in Castle Rock. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we've selected the best, most subtle, and most creative Easter eggs yet featured in the Hulu original series. We are not holding back on spoilers, so you can't say you weren't warned. Number 10. Casting My, uh, my White Oaks are dead. It's a miracle they had to topple over and kill someone. Did you bring your own chainsaw? It's not often that the core cast itself is an Easter egg. However, for any King fan, both longtime and new, Castle Rock has plenty of familiar faces. Sissy Spacek, who plays Ruth Deaver, earned an Oscar nomination for her role as Carrie White in Carrie back in 1976. Anne Cusack, who plays Warden Porter, is the sister of John Cusack, who was in both 1408 and Cell. And two of the most recent alums to the King world are straight from the set of 2017's It with Chosen Jacobs, also known as Mike Hanlon, playing Wendell Deaver, and Bill Skarsgård, who terrified millions with his turn as Pennywise, playing the kid. Henry Deaver. Number 9. Number 19. Within the Stephen King multiverse, the number 19 is considered something of an auspicious number, often denoting or warning of change for the person, place, or thing involved. For example, in The Shining novel, not only does Jack chase Wendy up 19 steps, the story also includes the ominous Room 217, and 2 plus 17 equals 19. There are dozens of other examples scattered throughout King's short stories, novellas, and novels too. So when fans caught a glimpse of Henry Deaver's old missing poster, they were not surprised to see the date 1-9-1991, two 19s in a row followed by a reversed 19. Number 8. Shawshank Prison the location of the novella and 1994 film The Shawshank Redemption, this prison is the source of many an Easter egg. A visual nod can be glimpsed in the second episode, where, for a moment, a street named Redemption Road is seen near the prison. One episode earlier, the music Warden Dale Lacey selects as his outro piece, Sularia Que Soave Zeffiretto, is the same piece that landed Andy Dufresne two weeks in the hole. Also, Warden Norton and his suicide are brought up during a tour of the prison. You can still see the bullet hole where Warden Norton... We can skip the audio tour. Right. But Shawshank isn't the only King location mentioned in the show. Juniper Hills Asylum, home to the likes of Henry Bowers of It after he loses his mind, also gets name-dropped when they try to find a place for the kid. I could pull some strings at Juniper Hill. Might be able to get him a bed by Monday. By Monday? What's he supposed to do until Monday? Number 7. Familiar Characters You signed for. I deposited the distress settlement for her, too. What else you been signing for, Alan? Like Dairy Maine, Castle Rock is one of King's frequently used fictitious locations. As each story doesn't happen in a vacuum, the events of one might be referenced in another. So not only are there plenty of familiar actors and locations in this series, but a number of familiar characters show up as well. Alan Pangborn, played by Scott Glenn, is the protagonist of Needful Things and is now the paramour of Ruth Deaver. Furthermore, Henry Deaver's client Leanne Chambers was married to Richard Eyeball Chambers, Chris's big brother in Stand By Me in the Body, and a member of Ace's gang along with Vince Desjardins, who also makes an appearance in show. Hear the name Vince Desjardins? Lived out on Remo Road. Number 6. Dodd House So the living space is just under 3,000 square feet, uh, plus you could finish the basement and turn it into a mother-in-law suite. While some familiar characters from other King works make appearances, others are merely implied. Such is the case when Molly Strand is showing a recently for-sale house to potential new homeowners. When it's made known to the buyers that one of the previous owners of the property died a terrible death, Molly tries to assuage their concerns by confessing that a murderous strangler died in her house, but she's totally fine. I mean, a serial strangler died in my house, and I sleep like a baby. The reference here is to the book and film The Dead Zone, which is also set in Castle Rock, 
and sees serial strangler Frank Dodd kill himself at home before he can be arrested. Number 5. Dale Lacey's Files It's discovered that before his sudden suicide, Warden Dale Lacey was compiling files on all the terrible things that have happened in Castle Rock over the years. In one scene, as his files are being looked through, a number of classic King Tales get a callback. From needful things to Cujo to the body to the dead zone. With animal attacks, murder, and a visit from perhaps the devil himself, Castle Rock makes Derry, Maine look like a safe, quiet little town. Remember the dog? The strangler? Sure you do. How about all the others that didn't make headlines? Number four, the mellow tiger and Nan's luncheonette. What happened to Nan's luncheonette? You want the cover story or the real story? After the Shawshank Redemption, the most called backstory in Castle Rock is most certainly Needful Things. Fans of the book will be happy to see that along with Alan Pangborn, a couple of establishments have made their way from one story to the other. Nan's Luncheonette, which seems to be a chain as it appears in both Derry and Castle Rock, gets a mention from Henry Deaver, while the Mellow Tiger, a bar and a main location in Needful Things, seems to still be doing a good business. You're not taking it? Uh, take that money, you gotta take their version of the story. And just like that, it goes from being a kidnapper to a clerical error. Number 3. The Crimson King As a way to combat her increasingly severe senility, Ruth Deaver uses chess pieces to bring herself back to reality. During a particularly bad moment, she finds the Red King. To Stephen King fans, this seems significant, as the Crimson King is the big bad and source of all evil in SK's universe. Also auspicious is that her chess set is not in the standard black and white, but red and white. The overarching theme for many of King's works is the battle between good and evil, frequently codified as the white for good and the red for evil. Safe to say, something big is going down in Castle Rock. See, I can get lost in the past. These are my breadcrumbs. If I find a chess piece in the icebox, well, I know it's now, not then. And I can find my way out of the woods. Number 2. Jackie Torrance um, Miss Torrance, Jackie, it's on the card. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. There are many familiar faces in Castle Rock, but even some of the new ones have connections of their own. Jackie is Molly's assistant, and while she seems sweet, she's also somewhat obsessed with death and mystery. For those not paying attention or less familiar with The Shining, her name might slip right by. However, although her real name is Diane, she renamed herself Jackie to honor her deceased uncle, Jack Torrance. Here's Johnny! <laughs> That's right, that Jack Torrance. In episode 8, she even proves herself to be handy around an axe, too. <laughs> Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Judge not, lest ye be judged. I'm going to climb the mountain to look for the beast. Now. Coming. Number one, Shining. She called it Shining. While it's never expressly said that she has The Shining, Molly Strand is clearly struggling with a psychic disorder. She can hear the thoughts and intentions of other people, sometimes from a distance away. At times, she even gets glimpses into the future. Her abilities are awfully similar to those of Danny Torrance, and like the grown-up Danny in the novel Dr. Sleep, she self-medicates with illicit substances to help dull the constant supernatural onslaught. How her Shining will play out in the grand scheme of things is yet to be seen, but perhaps we'll get a visit from Jackie's cousin Danny before the end. Prison, the real mess. Oh, smells like Cheerios. Jean Pittman, 24 hours from Tulsa. Where are you going next? Does the tape get erased? She's allowed in. Hey, I'm all witness. Uh, good luck. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.